Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. <laughs> it's Ryan. And Angela. <laughs> from RNA Music. Deep in the heart of Texas, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. We just had some pizza from across the street. Because it's been a hectic day. Not much time it for us. Has. It was nice to have pizza with our students, though. Yeah, it was. It was that really was, cool. That was cool. And that was a good deal. All right. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Ask RNA number 15? I think it's 15. <laughs> Something. I don't know. <laughs> So here we are. Let's get right to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did an update video about Ask RNA because timing things. So there's some questions from the update video plus last week's Ask RNA. Mm -hmm. All right, Peter Cruz. Hi, Peter. How can we land the prototype? Any specs to share? Would look great under my tree. Smiley face. Mm. My wife might read this. Peter, <laughs> I think he's referring to the, uh, the prototype uh, diamond Bolero I have. It's their QM. Uh, there's a couple of questions about this, so this should we'll go ahead and answer it. This is a, a prototype um, Bolero. It has got Seymour Duncan pickups in it. The um, the custom shop Seymour Duncan's. Mm. Other than that, other than the finish, it's just a normal uh, quilted maple Bolero like you could buy at any point in time. But they were experimenting with some finish options. They were trying to go for some kind of transparent camo type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, pretty much a stock Bolero, but um, with a funky finish. So yeah. it's a one of a kind prototype. There's only one made. And mm -hmm. as far as I know, there are no plans to make it uh, do a production run of that. Right. So it's one of one. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got it. For me. So, for his birthday. For my birthday. My for birthday. His birthday. My birthday yes. coming up. Yeah. So that's that's actually my birthday guitar because it's one of a kind. Yeah. Just like me. So, um, yeah. Normal normal Bolero QM, the QM series. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> cool finish though, that's all. So, uh, yeah. So I'm sorry, you can't. Well, I guess it's for sale. The price is right. No, no it ain't. No, this is my birthday. This no, is my ain't. birthday. You can't no, it ain't. It. no, it ain't. No, it ain't. <laughs> it ain't for sale. It ain't for sale. Sorry. So there you go. Maybe we'll do a limited production run RNA special guitar someday. An RNA music limited edition guitar. Limited edition. That's that's on the books yes. to happen eventually. So Maybe. We'll see what happens someday. CCH Craig. Howdy, Ryan. Hope you're well and better. That's one killer finish on that Bolero. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yes. Greg. My easy. question is, when will it be available for purchase? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been on the fence about a Bolero for six months now, and that finish may make me jump off the fence. It's not for sale. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I, will ha I will be happy to <laughs> help you find the right Bolero for you. Right. It just can't be that one. Yep. Sorry. I'm like all out of the... We'll scoot on over. Come on over, Lala. Come on over, Mama. That's better. Come on over, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Beast Boy. Oh, Mama. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, Craig. Thanks for the question, man. Uh, Big John, how do you guys feel about the new open carry law in Texas? I do believe you still need a concealed uh, permit. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct, uh, Big John. Yes. So what he's talking about is in January 1st, 2016, in Texas, people with a concealed handgun permit will be able to open carry on their person. That means on they, themselves. On their bodies. They can carry their guitar. And people can see it. On their hip, out in the open. They can see it. Out in the open. Um, Which is not really recommended. It's yeah. Not re it's not recommended. How do you feel about it? I, I'm excited about it. Because with all the crazies out there that are willing to do all kinds of dumb, asinine things to the American public, I think it's great for there to be. Now, I wouldn't personally open carry, like, mm -hmm. so people can see that I am carrying. Because someone made a good point when Ryan was looking to get our CCL. CC, CCL. CC, I did that again. Um, Concealed. H. Permit. CCH. <laughs> uh, license that you know if you're out in public and someone does want to cause you harm usually the one, first person that they take out is the one that they can see would retaliate someone who is carrying 
So personally, I wouldn't want to open to where someone can see that I am carrying a gun. Um, but yes, I, I do believe in carrying hand, you know, having a concealed handgun um, all the way because especially as a woman, um, if I'm traveling like to my parents who live in Laredo and there's a stretch of open highway. open highway where it's there's no rest stops you know for miles and miles it would be nice to have some protection when I go to the restroom by myself or even with the boys or whatever so I don't have to leave it in the car um, so I'm all for it but yeah, um, yeah. I'm glad because I think it's interesting um, mm -hmm. Angela brought up the same point you know I, I know some guys who own gun stores and, and they train people for concealed classes and stuff and most of those guys will say it's pretty dumb to actually open carry your firearm mm -hmm. for example you unless know, you're a police officer yeah I mean something. obviously police officer but if you're just a common citizen open carrying and there are points for this you know like let's say you're a criminal and you want to steal a gun mm -hmm. or you and a couple of your buddies and you see a guy or even rob someone yeah you see a guy who has a gun it's, rob a place. it's not that big of a deal to come up behind that person and maybe subdue them as a group and steal their gun. Um, or, for example, if there are one of those, God forbid, you know, situations where someone goes into a place and they're looking specifically to cause harm on purpose, if they see someone who is armed, obviously, that person, you become the very first target if you're open carrying. And it's going to be a surprise, so you're not going to see it coming if you're open carrying. But... You know, uh, c concealed is always better, I think, in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. that's it's interesting that it's happening. Uh, most people I know who are firearms aficionados uh, kind of agree that it's not really tactically a good idea to carry your firearm in the open. So, mm -hmm. anyways, there you go, Big John. Yep. yep. Thanks for the question. Withered says that didn't sound like your Mesa. Have you switched amps? No, that was that was my Mesa, but that video, the update video I used, it was just my iPad sitting on a music stand, mm -hmm. and so that's probably why the audio sounded not as good as normal. So mm -hmm. it was indeed the Mesa, but I will be switching apps soon. Whoa. Whoa. What is Whoa. it? What is it? We don't know. We don't know. Uh, next, John Burdett. <laughs> Hi, John. How do you guys? Hope you're all feeling better, man. There's been a virus going around, fighting for almost two weeks. Got me some heavy antibiotics. Finally feeling better. In the mm -hmm. ER for five hours. Oh, jeez. I hate the ER. So, no dehydration. Oh, okay. That's no good. Uh, my question is, are you feeling better? The guitar looks super. Love the top on it. Rock on. Uh, I am feeling better. Mm -hmm. I mentioned in my video I was feeling a bit under the weather. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was not feeling too good. Shop. Last couple of days. Uh, mostly I just had some headaches. I've been trying to cut back on my caffeine and my monsters. Yes. And cutting back on my caffeine and monsters and stuff. Pat, you would like that. Yeah, Pat. Pat will be happy. I'm cutting back on the go juice. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you've ever tried to cut caffeine, sometimes you can get some brutal headaches. Mm -hmm. So I've had a couple of headaches late at night. Kept me up. So, but I'm I'm moving past it. So, mm -hmm. getting better. Thanks for asking, John. That was really, really great. <sighs> Caffeine withdrawals. All right. I'm glad you're feeling better too. That yeah, sucks. man. Sorry you had to go through that. Yeah. Everybody's on the mend. A lot of people are coming down with stuff lately. It's just mm -hmm. bugs are going around. Yeah. Kerbal Kreutzer. This delay is great for me because I want to ask a question and it's still possible. The question is about singing. Oh, so excited. Any tips, shortcuts for learning to sing without finding out later that you are damaging your voice, etc.? Is there some things that should be avoided? Thanks. P.S. I read from Wikipedia that research on RNA has led to many important biological discoveries and numerous Nobel Prizes. So it's proven you guys are doing important work. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be recognized publicly for all the hard work. I'm waiting for doing. my um, Nobel I think it got lost in the mail. In music. I'm waiting for Nobel. That. Nobel. All right, so a singing question. Yeah, um, there are necessarily shortcuts. Um, a lot of it is not overtaxing your voice, um, not a lot of screaming, um, not a lot of singing from the throat. Uh, mostly you just got to really support your voice through your diaphragm and you let your lungs and your um, lower, your abdominal muscles do the work to thrust your, 
the sound of your voice out because a lot of times when we uh, sing from here is whenever you get a lot of the damage and it's um, abrasive to your voice but um, I would say singing lower tones monotone drinking um, room temperature water after before and after singing um, stuff like that relaxing your voice after you sing so that you don't jump right into you know, if you're, you know, going to a football game or anywhere where you know that you're going to Screaming extreme your voice Yelling's out, bad. unless you have really great technique or um, vocal exercises that you can do before um, and af and after. It's almost like stretching after working out. Then I wouldn't jump into like just screaming or yelling or something like that because it really could tax your voice um, too much. Mm -hmm. So. Smoking and drinking alcohol is bad for your voice. It is. Smoking. So try to avoid that. Smoking. Um, yeah, it is. Um, drinking um, stuff with that is like high acidic, like lemonade and stuff like that has, you know, are very high in um, high acidic drinks. Mm -hmm. High acid content. Are, are not good for your voice. Yeah. And. Um, <clears throat> Speaking in a calm manner beforehand and after to kind of relax your throat and voice so you're not engaging it too much. So you can do that too. Yeah, there are techniques if you want to sing kind of heavy rock stuff, there are ways to put some of that into your voice without actually damaging it. Yes. Um, there are Melissa ways. Cross is a great vocal coach. She's out of California, I think. In New York. Yeah. And most total opposite. Yeah. Opposite. She's on the coast. Um, She's on the coast. Um, but she actually trains and coaches guys who do screamo music. I guess it's a technical term. Yeah. But I don't offend. Um, uh, musicians who can go from singing extreme, you know, we call it cookie monster sound to a ballad piece that goes from one extreme to the other. They do that constantly at concerts, back-to-back -back concerts and stuff like that. So um, look her up, Melissa Cross. She has the, um, the, zen the, zen, of the Zen of Screaming and has a big Buddha on the front. It's a great it's DVD. Really great DVD. It's, you get the first one, not the second one. The first one actually has a disc that comes with it that has vocal exercises and it ranges from bass, um, tenor, um, baritone. alto, baritone, mezzo, you know, uh, soprano, it just goes all through. It has every range that you can That would have. be a great place to start. I would definitely recommend getting that DVD. You can yeah, buy especially it if you're a cheaper. rocker. Yeah, if you're a rocker. She goes through and explains the different techniques and different, how to push your voice up through your belly, through your abdomen, um, through your diaphragm, up to, you know, to get the most punch out of your voice. So, it's great yeah. stuff. Yeah, highly recommend it. Thanks, uh, Kurgle. Yes. Next, we have Adam Lamar. Mm -hmm. Hi, Adam. Howdy, Jax. Were either of you Stone Temple Pilots fans back in the day? We just talked about this earlier in we their were. band practice. Yes, because yeah. um, Bitter Bass Paul asked if we could do some songs. They're like, why aren't we doing a tribute song for the recital? It's like, because it's two last mm, Two last minute. minute. Two last yeah. minute. Two last yeah, minute. I had their first album. Maybe used, next recital. I used to listen to the first album I liked a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah, that was their big... Their main hit. I don't know about any of their other albums that they did that, did that well. But I liked yeah. their first record quite a bit. <laughs> We're looking at Tori. My dad's dog is here in the room. She's an old lady. And she's sitting here. She's sitting watching. Like, watching us. We're like we're about to feed her a snack. <laughs> looking over at her. But we're not. We have a studio audience. Your studio audience. You have your phone. It's out there. Oh, see, we take a picture of her. But, uh, I'm not moving the camera. Just yeah, right. we're not moving the camera. She looks, like a, she looks like a wreck right now anyways. Yeah, she does. She's a hot mess. She's a hot, tangly mess. But yes, we, yes, were, we were both, we both um, Stone Temple fans. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Tim Worley. Tim says, question, would you kindly walk us through the basics of that new Washburn acoustic Koa and the folk acoustic electric basic features and are any press hmm. well you know I actually took the little Koa guitar home because I thought we were gonna shoot this video at home last <laughs> night and we did not and now it's Saturday yeah. late afternoon and actually left the guitar at home yes. to shoot the video at home and I have it here but I'll put yeah. a picture up 
of it. But yes, it is a the WCDM 55K. Mm -hmm. It's a comfort series guitar. Yeah. It's a three quarter size satin finish dreadnought style acoustic guitar with a koa top back and sides. Mm -hmm. It features comfort series appointments like a forearm rest consisting of a beveled strip of rosewood at the lower bout, which becomes part of the rosewood top binding. Partial comfort cut away in the bottom and upper bouts allows superior access to the higher frets. The mahogany neck has a rosewood fingerboard with dot inlays, ties nicely with a rosewood bridge, rosewood capped headstock. Ooh, that's nice. I wonder what that was actually, but now I know. Rosewood capped headstock features a maple inlaid Washburn logo and a stylized W as well as the gold tuners and ebonite, not ebony, but ebonite, buttons. Buttons. The gorgeous rosette is made of alternating maple and mahogany. Mm. The WCD M55K sounds much larger and is far more musical than its smaller size would lead you to believe, crafted with premium materials and makes an excellent recording or travel guitar. Ten. It sounds like you're, you like how um, wine aficionados talk about it. It's a bold wine. It's a bold. With hints of, you know. The aroma. Um, yeah. And it is basic price, street price on that is right around, it's in the 300s. You know, I've seen it from 299. It's street name. Yeah, it's, it's chocolate. It's, it's around the 300, 300, 320, something like that. It's a great little three quarter size guitar. Um, no doubt. It sound it it does sound louder than you would think. It is a great guitar for like sitting on the couch or taking it traveling. She's getting closer. It's a cool guitar. She thinks there's there must be some candy in my pocket. Ryan better have my candy. You got Ryan my better biscuit. better have my candy. Biscuit better have my snacks. <laughs> um, what you should do, Tim, is come down to RNA Music and play it before Angela buys it or requests me to buy it. It's because she wants it. But you should come play it. Yeah, I have to do something with my fingernails, though. I can't do it with my fingernails. You can make it work. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the folk. I'll do a review on the folk coming soon, mm -hmm. hopefully. So there you go, Tim. There you go, Tim. That's the official download from Washburn's own website, narrated by my lovely Texas voice. So next we have Mr. Sea Beast. Hey guys, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Got some family time away from the shop, sending love and kisses from the south of England Shire. Ryan, I have an American special HSS. What would be a good classic high output bridge pickup for all styles? From modern metal to classic rock? Great question, Mr. Seabees. Oh, also, I have a conundrum. I'm a fan of extra jumbo frets. Do I have extra jumbo frets put on or a partial scallop? What's more mm -hmm. cost effective and would be more beneficial? Mm. Uh, buy a new guitar. Buy another guitar. Oops, sorry, my bad. I would probably go with the extra jumbo frets, personally, because from what I understand, you know, doing the scallop. You better hope you find somebody who's really good at doing scallops because it right. would be easy to ruin a fretboard if they do it wrong. So I would probably just go out and look for a guitar that has extra jumbos already in it. But back to the pickup question. If you were wanting to stay passives, I would probably recommend the Seymour Duncan Custom Custom. <laughs> Not the Custom. But the custom, custom Seymour Duncan custom, custom I think is a great pickup. Say that three times fast. Seymour Duncan custom, custom Seymour Duncan custom, custom. <laughs> See, just custom. I can't. Mm -hmm. Seymour Duncan custom, custom. I'd recommend that one. It's a great guitar. I have it in two of my guitars. One of my guitars for sure. Two, I think. Two. I have it in two of my guitars. Covers a lot of great uh, ground sonically. So. Check that one out. Uh, and last but finally, last but not least, finally, Boiling Paul, you guys are still fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Ryan, a while back, you turned me on to the NYXL strings, which are just great. I think so. Do you have any suggestions for acoustic strings? I've been using elixirs for years, and maybe they're not the best. Thanks for the input. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, um, it's going to come as no surprise. I'm going to suggest that you probably give the Diderio EXPs 
a chance. Now what you might not know is the EXP from the Dario is their coated string. Mm -hmm. But what they've just done recently is they've replaced the inner core of their EXP coated strings with the NYXL steel inner core. So it's kind of like a hybrid. It's mm -hmm. the, the inner cores are the mm -hmm. NYXL and then the unwound strings are NYXLs and they're wrapped with the normal coated strings. So mm -hmm. I would suggest going out and getting some uh, EXPs. Now look for it, it'll have a little silver tag on the thing that says mm -hmm. NY Steel on it. Because mm -hmm. if you buy some older stock EXPs, they won't have the, the NYXL cores. So right. make sure it has NY Steel on the EXP package. But give those sure, a try. Sure. I think you'll like them. I'm not a big fan of, of elixirs myself either. Um, there's a lot of people out there making coated strings. My favorite is the D'Addario's. Uh, then there's Clear Tone. A lot of guys like Clear Tone, like Robert Baker. <clears throat> but I prefer the D'Addario's. So give those a shot, Boiling Paul. There you go. And uh, thank you everyone for a little bit of a later edition. Ask RNA. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Long day coming. What are we doing when we get home? Christmas lights! Christmas lights! That's right. And I gotta practice some guitar. Mm -hmm. Nathan's gonna play Skyrim. Yep. Christmas lights. In Garland. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Wheelie wheelie. Wheelie. Hands ended up like that. Because you're so metal. Yeah. Bye, guys. Ah. I love you so much. Love you.